Talk. My name is Mark Paul. My co-host Justin Baker here with me in studio as per the usual. And uh, we are going to be handing out some quarter mark awards. Said that with authority. Yes. I love it. Well, people look forward to our quarter mark awards. Don't they? This is the third time we've done the quarter mark awards. Who else does quarter mark rewards? No one. No one's ever thought of it before. Ah, Never. Ah, ah, ah. You haven't thought of it till right now. It's because, see, other people thought about it. They went and they went, the time machine thing went backwards and like, now that nobody how believes me that, you know, we came up with it, but whatever. Well, you know, we know we came up with it. That's very true. We That's did. what's important. Um, okay. So the, uh, the awards that we will be handing out today. We decided to scrap the like Hart, Norris, R- Vesna, those those things. That, that's for the end of the year. Decided to go with a couple other categories. We have M- MVP. We have the best defensive defenseman, offensive defenseman, goaltender, defensive forward, offensive forward, top rookie, comeback player, and top coach thus far. And one caveat, no one can win two awards. So MVP, whether it's a forward or a defenseman, they can't win the top defenseman award. So kind of spreads it out. It kind of gets boring if you're like, well, what's the point of having a top forward award if you have an MVP? Because usually your MVP is going to be a forward or, you know, if it's the defenseman, then it's a double up award. So we're uh, we're going going that way. So with that said, uh, how did you make the decision to give guys these awards at this point in the season? Like, was it the standings? Was it personal performance? I think it, a lot weighed a little bit more on personal performance than it did the standings. I think they definitely came into play because, you know, there there were a couple of these awards where I looked at, you know, guys and I said, okay, well, your team is at the freaking bottom of the league, but I think what you've meant to this team maybe means a lot more than where you are in the standings. Um, just because, again, I think... You know, for example, and this is a guy who didn't make any of my awards, but, you know, Dylan Larkin, right? He's a guy I get to watch firsthand all the time, and what he means to the Red Wings is a lot more than what, you know, the Red Wings are in the standings. And so, um, obviously, at 31st, it doesn't help at at all. But, um, yeah, I I think if he, you know, if he was sitting maybe top five, top six in terms of scoring, he could easily be, a case could be made for him in terms of the, the MVP award. But okay. again, that's kind of the way I looked at it a little bit. Uh, the one I, I think I had the most fun looking at um, was probably the best defenseman, defensive, defensive defenseman. defenseman okay. Yeah, that one made it really challenging because it's it's easy to want to go and take the most offensive guy like a lot of people do for the Norris. So right, right. getting to look at the other end of the spectrum was a ton of fun. Okay. Um, well, with that said, for me, I did use the standings as a little bit of my, like for an MVP, you're not really valuable to me if your team's way out of the playoffs. I mean, at this point, nobody's really way, like so far out of it that they can't catch up. I mean, even Anaheim, four points out of the playoffs. Could they turn things around? I don't think so, but you know, I, I guess someone could get on a hot streak and, and squeeze their way in. John Gibson's unreal, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm mostly going, all right, you know, here's, here's the guys that I think not only are performing, but are doing it when it that it matters at this point. And so uh, that's, that played a role. There were really, I I actually don't think there was anyone that made my list that isn't in the playoffs right now. Okay. I do have one, one guy. So, okay, well, uh, we'll leave the MVP for last. Let's, let's go to your top coach. Top coach coaching like a, like a wizard, like a boss. Uh, I've got Dave Tippett. For me, okay. top coach. Um, in Edmonton. Yeah. I, again, I, I think systems do play a, a ton in terms of team success. And I think, you know, it's been very clear over the last year and a half with the Islanders what success they've had because of Barry Trotz. And it would be easy to give him this award as well. I think you can just say, okay, sure, great. Barry They're Trotz. at the top of their... You know, they're one of the top teams in the East right now. Uh, but for me, I think the turnaround from last year to this year is a little bit more impressive than success sustained success that the Islanders are having, uh, especially when you do have top level talent last year, nobody could get it done with those guys. You know, um, Ken Hitchcock couldn't do it. And then, sure. you know, Dave Tippett comes in, puts a new system in and, you know, Mike Smith is having a good year. Uh, you know, 
Koskinen even looks halfway decent. Yes. So, uh, yes, he does. <laughs> you know, hey, maybe maybe it is the coach in here. So uh, for me, yeah, I I give my my nod to him for this one. All right, uh, my top coach is Bill Pete. Oh, sorry, uh, my top coach, <laughs> John is Hines, Mike uh, Mike Bat, John. H- I don't know. I don't know. I no head coaches. I, I, I didn't prepare. I, I <laughs> no. Uh, no, my my top coach. Excuse me. Is uh, who do you think it is? You didn't see my list. I didn't see your list, so I have no idea. Are you going to say? I, re- um, I wrestled between this, but are you going to say Todd McClellan? No, I'm not going to say Todd McClellan. Damn, I'm going with Joel Quinville. Okay, the Q. I like it. I really like the way that the Panthers, uh, despite. Still not getting good goaltending. Hey, their backup is looking pretty good. First game in, shutout, three to nothing. Dreger, is that how you yeah, pronounce yeah, his name? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, they're they're buzzing along. I know that they're you know they're they're not necessarily they're they're not a playoff team uh, as a lock right now. They're sitting in the playoffs. Uh, I really like what he's doing with their team in terms of just opening things up a little bit. I think that maybe in the past they've been very structured, and and I I like. What he's what he's doing, allowing guys to play. Uh, I also, I mean, if they can ever figure out their goaltending, they'll be they'll be good Dude, to go. If they get a, just a little bit, if Bobby comes back and gets a little bit, they'll be great. I mean, this team is this team's scoring though. I mean, 90, 94 goals right now. There are a few teams, the Bruins and the Capitals, have more goals than this team. But uh, other than that, in the Eastern Conference, that's who's that's who's. Uh, Who's scoring like crazy? Colorado is the only other team in the league with more goals. So the Florida Panthers finally are like they're figuring out how to score goals and doing it in the first quarter of the season, which never happens. Never happens. <laughs> I'll bet you they'll struggle mightily in the last fourth. Goodness, let's the hope opposite. not. I hope they make the playoffs this year. Me too. It'd be good. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm giving it to Joel Quinville the early award. I, I would also, uh, you know, I, I just can't. I can't give it to anybody who coaches the Boston Bruins, but no, goodness no. But he he'd pro- in reality he'd probably win it. You could give him yeah a little nod there for sure. Uh, okay, so there's the coach. Um, by the way, the Washington Capitals have just quietly buzzed along and torched torched everyone too. So. Yeah, even though the Islanders are like on a ridiculous pace and keep winning games, they just can't catch up with the the Capitals because they just keep winning. Man, yep, yep. it's crazy. Uh, okay, let's go with the comeback player of the year. Ooh, okay, I, I do like this one. I I had two guys in mind for for this award, and and I really struggled which one I wanted to give it to. One of them is is a household name kind of guy, and just because of that, I I said you know what, no, I I got to give it to the lesser known player. Um, and so the guy who didn't win it for me is Anze Kopitar because okay. you know even though he's on a terrible team. You know, he still has what what I would consider being a bounce back year right now. He's still at a point per game pace. But uh, the guy who ultimately got it for me, he's on. And again, I I guess I should say this guy is on a non-playoff team. So that makes two people on my list. But uh, J.G. Peugeot, Jean-Gabriel Peugeot from the Ottawa Senators. He uh, injured last year. I think he played 37, 39 games, something like that. Only put up like 16 points. And he's on a torrid pace right now, 20 points through 27 games on a team where he has very little support. I mean, Brady Kachuk, and, you know, that's about it. And he's he's putting up great numbers, great leadership, and I love watching this kid play. And he'll be a nice little piece for Ottawa, maybe to dangle at the deadline yeah. to go to a team yeah, that needs like, some depth. I don't know if you'll get a first-round pick for him, but you definitely get a second-round pick for, for him, sure. I think, or maybe a prospect. Uh, I'm surprised this is uh, – this was your opportunity – my opportunity. <laughs> you had every opportunity to rep your boy, and you didn't. And here I am picking Connor Hellebuck. I love it. When the comeback player of the year. I love it. Especially because I think it was the first game of the season. Uh, I think Hellebuck got shelled. Uh, first game of the season. Yeah, he gave up five goals on 31 shots. And it got destroyed by the New York Rangers. But remember, they had no defensemen. They still don't have defense. <laughs> and he has saved the Winnipeg Jets season. 21 games, or he started 20 games. He's won 13 of them. And when you look at his statistics in his, uh, his second, he was second in Vezina Trophy voting. Uh, he's he's a little below his the goal saved above average, which 
the, his 23.75 was just outrageous. But he's at 15.74. He's got 75% of his starts are considered quality starts, which is by far the highest percentage in his career. And uh, he's just, he's tearing it up. Two, 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 three goals against the average, nine, three, three save percentage for a guy who last year really struggled to get anything going. Only had 45% of his starts were considered quality starts. Pretty dang good. And that is, that's a start where you uh, basically you have 88, 88.5% save percentage on, on nights with 20 or fewer shots. Um, or you start with the save percentage greater than the average save percentage for the year on uh, goalies across the board. So he has torn it up. And I'm happy for him. I am too. I'm glad that he's, he's finally been put in a situation now. It's, he's shining. He's really been the, the one, like, to me, he's the reason they're there. Like, they're third place in that central division, and no one thought that they had any, ho- any hope of, of getting it, at least in the top three. I mean, you know, you were, I think if you're a Jets fan, you were hoping, all right, hopefully we, we can find our way into the wild card and get healthy and, and maybe make a deal at the deadline and, and figure out a way to do this. But fortunately for them, the central division has not been as good as some expected with, I mean, Chicago is probably the only team in that we expected to be real bad. I don't know if we expected them to be real bad. I thought they could they could potentially be a bubble team, Minnesota, but still, we knew would be bad. But yeah, Nashville Minnesota's on a really nice strong. little little streak too right now. I think they're six one and three in their last ten, something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, Dallas is tied in points with them, and but I mean they're only a point behind the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, that is impressive okay. considering the scoring that Colorado has that Winnipeg doesn't. Right, right. I mean, I know Colorado's had lots of injuries, but. They still, they still they're still been going. doing it. <laughs> still keep going. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's go to what do you want? To, you pick the next award. Let's go with. Uh, let's see. We did comeback. We did coach best. Let's do best goalie because we just talked about him, and I want to okay. get that out of the way. Oh, he's your best goalie. He's my best goalie. Oh, hot damn! Yeah, I, you know, I didn't even dawn on me that he could camp, be your top goalie. Yeah, can't you know what? And it disappointed me when you said comeback player because I'm like. Damn, that means he's not going to be the best goaltender. So, again, I want to get it out of the way. I want to see who you have because there's another guy who who could potentially, I think Darcy Kemper was another guy I, I highly considered for my best goaltender. But to me, the team in front of Kemper in terms of systems and defense are much better than what Hollabuck's got in front of him in terms of defense. And so, to me, I had I had to give the nod to Hollabuck. And if you look at it too, he's I think he's at almost 100 more shots faced. So... Maybe you look at that and you could say, okay, well, yeah, he's you know probably faced a lot higher quality starts and chances too. So for me, Hollabuck is my best goalie of the year so far. I've got Tuukka Rask. Okay, I, I can't hate it. He, he's playing phenomenal. Thirteen right now. and two, and almost almost a below two goals against average, nine three three save percentage. I think for a guy that a lot of people had written off, myself included, thinking that maybe he was you know kind of kind of past his. Well, that His game ability seven to really perform, and uh, I mean the playoffs are a totally different animal. But I, it's hard to ignore what Boston's been able to do. I mean, nineteen and three, and uh, he's he's been really there for for all, all most of those wins, and he looks great. Uh, I I kind of had two people for this award though. So Rask to me is kind of you're like. Well, his team's playing unreal. He's the starting goalie, and not only is he is he pl- like winning games, he's his stats are out of this world. Right, like they're fantastic. Some of the tops in the league. Uh, other guy that I, I wanted to give the nod to top goaltender, I really think is Frederick Anderson in terms of goaltending MVP. Sure, uh, I think you could toss flip a coin between Hellebuck and and Anderson, and say without. Either of those guys, maybe both their teams be at the are bottom, like bottom third of the league. Right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I I'd say even more so for the Leafs. If Frederick Anderson isn't there, they might be the worst team. They might be below anybody but like the Wings and the Kings. Ooh! Imagine if they had to play Hutchinson, <laughs> Hutchinson and Cuesco or oh. Cuesco or whatever. You feel? I feel bad for Toronto because. You have all that talent in front of you, but you have no backup goaltender. Like they, they've got it. They've got it. Got to figure it out if they want something. any success this year. Or just start playing Anderson a bunch until you can find a guy, and then just give Anderson a little rest. Just start giving a, the back a little the resty poo. A little resty. 
Um, okay, uh, it's best goalie, so I guess uh, it's it's a toss up between between three guys. Then I guess we'll okay, just toss them all into a blender. Wow. And see who comes out. Uh, okay, let's go best offensive defenseman. Okay, I think this one we will probably have the same guy, but probably we'll see. I've got the guy leading the NHL in defensive points, and that is John Carlson. Yeah, hard to uh, hard to ignore the guy. Seventh yeah. in league scoring. <laughs> I know. Just tearing it up. Yeah. Pulling uh pulling an Eric Carlson. Wow, there you go. But yeah, thirty seven points in twenty eight games. He he did start out scoring a ton of goals. And he's really he's slowed down in the in terms of the goal scoring. Uh just eight goals now through twenty eight games. It really looked like he was gonna end up with like forty goals on the season. He still will probably get twenty, twenty five, which is he, just incredibly impressive anyways. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. There's just no, there's no not putting him there. Usually. Right. I mean, I guess if you were, if you had to consider anyone else, Dougie Hamilton from Carolina Maybe. is is having a nice season. Uh, really is looking looking fantastic with uh, was it Brent Pesci? Is that who's playing with a lot? Yes, he is. is. Slow, slow, yeah, Brent Pesci. So. Uh, okay, <laughs> defensive or offensive defenseman, easy choice, John Carlson. Now let's do defensive defenseman. So this you, is where it gets interesting. You said uh, you were you were enjoying that, so yeah, I still. um I, I did look at one guy, and you you just mentioned his name playing on the other side of Hamilton there, Brett Pesci. Um, he was a guy I looked at some of his advanced stats and and kind of was a little impressed. I don't get to watch Carolina as much. Um, in fact, I, I think I've only sat through like one full game of theirs this season and just watched the highlights of the rest. So, um, but this is the guy I ultimately picked for this. Um, is a guy who I think doesn't get enough attention because of you know the captain in front of him who plays on defense. And for me, the pick is Ryan Ellis this year, right now. Ah, okay. Yeah, I love his... Another guy not in the playoffs. Another guy... Well, I guess, yeah. I didn't <laughs> even think about that. You you know what? I, I I forget that Nashville's sitting outside looking in right now because you know we've, we mentioned it before on one of our previous casts, talking about Lavillette being... Uh, a potential guy who could lose his job. I mean, we just saw Hines get get tanked here recently, and yep. um, you know Babcock and Bill Peters. Um, but yeah, so for Nashville sitting outside, it's 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 almost a little weird. Um, the one knock I will say on on Ryan Ellis when you look at it, he doesn't get. Um, I think it's forty six ish percent of his starts are in, in the defensive zone, where there's a lot of other guys higher up on the pecking order that play a lot more in their defensive zone to start than they would in the offensive zone. And I think that's just because of where he sits in terms of the depth chart. But when you look at his numbers in terms of like his PDO and his, his Corsi, they're all real nice and the best of his career right now. And so to me, he's a guy who's just producing offensively and defensively for this team, you know, when they're just, they're struggling to, you know, to keep pace in the standings right now. Okay. Yeah. If they didn't have Ryan Ellis and, and he's large, you know, you kind of skip past him. When you're going right. to the other guys that are on that team. But, uh, yeah, um, my defensive defenseman is a guy that you generally would think of as an offensive defenseman. Okay. But uh, I'm giving my defensive defenseman award to a guy who could also, you know, maybe be in the conversation for a, for a comeback guy a little bit. Uh, he's definitely had his, his injury history. I don't. I don't think he quite had a, a bad enough season or anything to be the comeback guy. But it's Chris Letang. Okay, good pick. Uh, I really like the way that you know they, the Penguins have have gone through a lot of injuries. I mean, Crosby's out right now. Malkin was out for about a month. Uh, they've had guys going down all over the place. They, you know, you watch Penguins highlights, and half the time, I'm like, who the heck? Who's that guy? Uh, you know, anytime the they've shown time and time again that they can get hurt, bring guys up, and and they'll still perform. But Chris Letang is the guy on the back end. I mean, he's constantly. Last game, I think he he had over twenty eight minutes of ice time. He's constantly up over twenty six, twenty seven minutes of ice time, and uh, is just a rock back there. And one stat that I wanted to hone in on was shot attempts for and against while he's on the ice. And he is second in the league only to uh, to Sean Walker. I know Latang, I mean, as far as injury go, Latang also has has missed some games, only played 19. Uh, but in terms of uh, percentage, being on the ice for shots for and being on the ice for them against, 
135 plus 135 and uh, is the percentage relative to uh, shot attempt percentage relative percentage is 10.88 which is by far the highest of anyone who uh, who's anywhere near him just shows what's happening when he's on the ice that by far his team is getting many more opportunities when he's on the ice as opposed to when he's not uh, so as much as we like to think everything runs through a Crosby and a Malkin, it really starts with Chris Letang. Maybe the most, is it possible? Is Chris Letang, for, for the Penguins, the most important player on the ice? Plays about half the game, and when he's on the ice, everything changes. Yeah, I mean, when you consider what else they have on defense, when you look at guys like Jack Johnson and and the rest of their decor, I mean, Dumoulin, Dumoulin has has done well yeah, as well, but he's been fine. But of tank. but again, yeah, when you when you have such a lack of, I mean, like again, we we talked about it. Crosby's been out, right? Well, Malkin stepped up and filled in that role, and when Malkin's been out, Crosby's been so they have that depth in the forward position to kind of fill it in. Whereas like on the back end, they really they really don't. You know, Chris Letang's down, it it they suffer a bit. You know, at least this season. Yeah. So. Yeah. You so know, good pick. I like it. You know who is uh, about the worst defenseman in the league? Defensive defenseman? Please. It's Nikita Zaitsev Ooh. for the Ottawa Senators. He has been on the ice for 547 shots against and uh, has been on the ice for 150 more shots against than four. The only guy with more is Lieber Hay- Hayek, right? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Hayek? He's 174, but. No uh, bueno. Pretty, pretty Rangers let in a bunch of shots anyway, yeah. so yeah. Granted, Thomas Shabbat, number two in terms of shots against, but the shots for makes up for it, and he is, he's yeah he's nowhere near the top in in that. Uh, obviously, because he's getting lots of shots. He is. Uh, anyways, we'll we'll try to not talk about Nikita Zaitsev when talking about awards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to what do we want to do? Top rookie. Top rookie. Yeah, okay. let's let's throw that one in there. I feel like we might have the same, but let's find out. Yeah, uh, I'll let you go first this time. I'm going to say Cal McCarr. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. Um, Cal McCarr is just, I mean, he's he blows people away. It, it is, it's funny to listen to the uh, the Avs home broadcast because they just have a, a stiffy the whole time they watch Cal <laughs> McCarr. Uh, <laughs> I, I think some of it is, I mean, they, they act like, He's doing things that no one could ever dream of doing. Uh, he just does it at such a high speed. He, he's he's really good, uh, and, and probably is going to be a guy who it looks like will win a Norris Trophy someday. Uh, third in defensive scoring, just behind Carlson and Dougie Hamilton. Uh, I mean, he's uh, and then you get him with Sam, Sammy Gerrard, and those two guys just wheel and deal whenever they're out there together. They don't always play together, but when they do, it's uh, it's pretty nasty. And yeah, I mean, he looks great. Along, I mean, Quinn Hughes too. Looks yeah, he's fantastic. right up there. Uh, just doesn't play on as good of a team. That's very true. And so, let me ask you this though, because you know, I, I think Cal McCarr has eight goals. Well, that's very true. <laughs> I mean, Cal McCarr has been. Uh, I mean, he's got what eleven power play points. The Quinn Hughes is thirteen. So yeah. you kind of looked at Cal McCarr as more of a five on five guy, and and then that kind of begs the question too. You know, what kind of value do do both of these guys have in terms of their you know? their worth to the team. And I think maybe Quinn Hughes, maybe a little bit more to Vancouver than Cal McCarr to Colorado, but I don't know about that. No, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I think both of them are definitely important. I think I, I wonder, and it, it's hard. It's hard because yeah, any team you take their best defenseman away, of course they're valuable to them. Right. Imagine, you know, imagine taking any of the guys away that are here at the top of the top of the scoring for their teams, I mean, their teams would likely fall down the standings quite a bit. Yeah, without them. But. Another rookie too, uh, Victor Olafson. Here's here's a funny little stat. So we we talked about his towards start at the beginning. He was hot. His first yeah. six goals yeah. on the power play hasn't scored any power play goals since. And you know, in the month of November, the Sabers, I think they had thirty five power play chances and only scored one goal. The wow. whole entire month. Yikes! Yeah, that's it's, why they're falling off. Exactly, and. That's why you got, I mean, we could have, if they had been even remotely close to their, their, you know, percentage, yeah. percentage. Yeah. You know, Olafson, we might be talking about him for this award just because of the production that could have came out of that. But instead when you're not scoring, man, it kind of sucks. 
Yeah, they went from what, like the second best power play in the league to now they're 17th. It's not good. So, uh, yeah, it's clear having a good power play definitely helps. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I did not. Thank you. It makes a big difference. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go defensive forward first, and then we'll do offensive forward, and, and then we'll get to our MVP. I like this. All right, defensive forward. Do you want to go first, or shall I? Oh, you can go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for, <laughs> for me, this is a guy who I thought should have won it last year, and that is Mark Stone right now. Ah, okay, Mark Stone. Yeah, he is. Um, Second in the league in takeaways, just one behind Matthew Barzell. And that's, I kind of, you know, I've mentioned his two-way game before, but um, yeah, Matt Stone, his his takeaways are great. His his giveaways, though, are far less than most of the guys at the top of the, the league in terms of takeaways. And, um, and then another thing that I just, I love it, um, his defensive zone starts, you know, he's, he's on a team that has kind of struggled a little bit lately. I think they're just barely holding on to a playoff spot right now. But, um, you know, he, they've had some guys having some decent seasons. You know, Wild Bill, I think, is starting to come back around. But, um, you know, and so I think his importance in terms of what he does on both sides of the ice is sort of being just missed a little bit, right? Because, um, you know, yeah, they can go out and they can put up some goals and they've had some some decent goaltending from Mark andre Fleury, but I think without a guy like Stone um, defensively in front of him, I think it would just wouldn't look so great. Yeah, he's an important player to that team now. Uh, yeah. I think, I think you're seeing some players come back down to normal. Like some guys just had unreal seasons those first couple of years, and uh, things are starting to level out in Vegas. I don't know if they're as good as people thought they might be here. Uh, at the same time, 29 games in, there's been a lot of ups for that team. And it's just, you're going to get some downs. And when you've gone on a couple good playoff runs, and I don't know, they lost in the, what, the second, first or second round last year? For, second round. Excuse me. Uh, they they've went to the Stanley Cup Finals the year before. I mean, this this team is a team that I think is looking ahead to the playoffs. And they're, they're fine right now. You know, they're not in a position where they're blowing anyone away. But I don't think that this is going to be a team that misses the playoffs. They're just they're just kind of on cruise control right now, which is frankly kind of where you want to be right now. I mean, we've seen some teams go all in early in the regular season, and what that can do to you come March, April, and uh, so I you know I wonder, and and maybe that's kind of what the Tampa Bay Lightning are thinking. Will the Tampa Bay Lightning be able to <laughs> pull this together or not? <laughs> oh boy, we're all waiting. Uh, it's weird not having anybody on the Tampa Bay Lightning on this list. That's very, very true, yeah. Very weird. Whereas last year, it felt like everyone, Hedman and Kucherov and he tossed in Stamco somewhere. Vasilevsky, you could put Vasilesi, all those guys yeah. in there, yeah. Yep. Whereas this, this year, nowhere to be found. Uh, okay, well, let's do let's do the MVP first. No, we'll do we'll just do them in tandem. Whatever you want. Um, okay, it depends on who your best offensive forward is. <laughs> okay, they're both... Well, obviously, they have to be different, but um, my best offensive forward is Leon Dreisaitl. Okay, me too. Okay. Which makes your MVP Connor McDavid. No, it is not. No. No. Wow. Okay. I went off the board a little bit. You you did, because uh, I think that if you're going to give someone the best offensive forward, it's not Connor McDavid. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, to me, Leon has been, I think, a little bit more important to this team, Um you know what, Connor McDavid? He marginally shocking statement. <laughs> I think right now with they basically have the exact same stat. They really do. McDavid has one extra goal. Yeah, they they pretty much do. But I think, uh, you know, and it's it's funny. Both you, have the exact same shooting percentage, nineteen point six percent. Do they really? Exact same. Wow. McDavid has ninety seven shots. Drysaddle has ninety two. Yeah, Leon does get um, maybe. I think it's about one 30, extra shift a game. 30 seconds longer on average, yeah. Yeah, and another 30 seconds, so there's that one shift. Um, but I just I just like his game a little bit more right now than Connor's. Um, not that I've seen a ton of the Oilers. I, I haven't watched too many of their games, but um, what I have, I just I like what I see out of dry side. Oh, just a little bit more. Um, and to me, that kind of made it a little bit more difficult to give Connor McDavid the MVP just because when you when you have the two best guys – does that really make you more valuable to your team than maybe a guy who is just by himself on a lone island? I guess. Right, to a I team? Wanna, who's your who, who's your MVP? Patrick Kane. 
Patrick Kane, a guy on the Patrick worst Kane. team in the league, basically. One of the worst teams in the league, but I, I kid you not, I think the Chicago Blackhawks would be the very worst team in the league if it was not for him. He he literally, until the, the shutout the other night by St. Louis, three to nothing, Jake Allen finally doing something with his life. Yes, um, I watched that game, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, it ended Patty Kane's 15-game point streak. I mean, this is a guy who who legit is carrying this team on his back because they don't have anybody else doing it for them right now. And I think when you look at, like, for instance, you can look at Boston, you can look at Edmonton, and these these are two teams that have, you know, close to, I think, 47 or 46% each um, in terms of their offensive, all like their goals. That's how the percentage of goals that go through them versus the rest of the team. And I, I would probably argue that maybe Patty Kane is still more important to the Blackhawks than maybe those lines are to that team. But again, you have a line. You don't have just one guy doing it. Well, you have two guys. You're right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. you have two guys doing it who can give the puck to Zach Cassian. Nathan McKinnon has basically been by himself for he the has, last like, other guys 12 have, games. But he has had a lot of support early on in the season with you know Landis Skog and Ranton. Yeah, but there. it's not like Kane doesn't have to brink it. The Kane they're not doing anything. Yeah, but he still has some guys around him. Obviously, like I mean, yes, Kane is fantastic. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to argue. Kane that. is Kane's 14 fantastic. points higher than the next closest guy on his team, and I think you're going to see almost that sort of Taylor Hall disparity you had when he won the heart a, few, a couple of years ago. And the Brinkett's got 19 points. He's I, got five I goals. Would much. I, I I can get on board with not giving it to Connor McDavid. Okay. If I if I weren't going to give it to Connor McDavid, and I was going to go your route, yeah, I'm, I'm going with Jack Eichel. Who has sixteen more points than the next guy? Yeah, and I would totally be okay with that because it's the and Olsen same. Hasn't done a whole, you know. No, he hasn't done anything, and it's. I, I think it's the, the almost the same argument that I'm making for Patty Kane here, and I think what what these guys but have the meant Buffalo to their Sabres teams. are actually in a in a position to do something. Like they're third in their division. Sure, absolutely. And, and watching them back to back games against the Leafs, like they they're for real. They're going to do something. I, I think the Buffalo Sabres are going to make the playoffs. I think it'll probably end up being a wild card spot, but I think they're going to make the playoffs. And so I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give something to Jack Eichel because he has been the reason. I mean, he looks great. He does look great, and I, I am super happy for his right success. Now. Yeah, he is. He is going to be up there. I think at the end of the year, you're going to if Buffalo is in a playoff spot, I think you're going to hear Jack Eichel's name for for the heart. Absolutely. So I would not hate that argument either for his name. So. Patty Kane, going old school. Yeah, I, I had to. I part of me too also wanted to, to throw something out there that wasn't Connor McDavid or Drysdale. That's so. fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah, you. I mean, you could at this point just because McKinnon's been playing without Ranton and without uh, Landis Cog for so long, and the Avalanche have been buzzed right Still along. Still tearing it up. Yeah, I, I think there's an argument to be made for McKinnon too. Uh, for MVP because that team just kept winning with him. Absolutely, and he he's the guy. Like he is the guy. No, no doubt about it. But it certainly helps having nice players like Ranton and <laughs> right. Eh, come back from your injury, first get game four, and points. four points. Yeah. yeah, saved my fantasy team that day. Yep. yep. You're not the first person I heard say that. All right. <laughs> uh, I think I heard somebody say they drafted Ranton and Tavares in their. I've been my there. fantasy team's been dealing with injuries. I've had Ranton out. I've had Mantha out. I had Philip Grubauer out for a small stretch there too. I mean, just been dealing with freaking yep. injuries left and right. That'll happen. Yep. All right. Well, my MVP is Connor McDavid. And Clearly. I actually didn't say my best defensive forward. Oh, no. You didn't. You just glossed right over that one. <laughs> we did. Uh, it's a guy that, uh, you know, he could win it every year. It's Alexander Barkov. Okay, yeah. He's always in my he's top having three. having a beautiful start to the season. More than a point per game. Like, I think finally he's he's putting up some good point totals. I think he'll, he might. He's a shot at getting 30 goals this year. Okay. For a guy who... He tends to score a little bit less. You know, he's a, he's more of a setup guy, but uh, really like the way Barkov's been playing. Like, yeah, I, I think he'll still be a ninety point player again this year. Yeah, so which is great. Uh, I I think there's there's a chance he he breaks a hundred this year. Uh, Joel Quinville I think has really enabled him to getting the most out of to him to dominate. Yes. All right. Well, that's uh, there it is. There's our awards. Yeah, come at me. Fight me over that Patty Kane. Fight us. At OT Hockey Talk. You can tweet at us. Let us know what you thought of our list. And if you have something different, shoot it over. And with that said, we'll talk to you soon.